Dear all, this is the second out of the seven audio recaps that will be done a summary of the International Business Law Lectures by Dr. Mark Wakami at the European Law School Bachelor's Course of the Maastricht University. This is a summary of the second lecture of the course. It's meant to be a brief overview, which does not replace the attendance to the lectures or the tutorials, the reading of the course reader, and of the recommended literature thereon. Please mind also that for your memorandum and mock arbitration strategy, you are required to cite all relevant articles, which for the sake of time are not always mentioned in this recording. The second lecture focuses on the duties of the buyer and the seller according to INCO terms and the CISG, as well as in the remedies available for both the buyer and the seller under the CISG. Last week we learned under which circumstances the CISG, the most successful attempt at the unification of international sales law, is applicable. But just because the CISG is the applicable law does not mean that all of the articles in the CISG apply to the contract. One example are INCO terms. INCO terms as a concept is much less scary than it sounds. In fact, there's 11 standardized non-binding guidelines created by the International Chamber of Commerce are a simple way for parties to know in advance who is responsible for what, particularly these three aspects. One, who arranges carriage. Two, who pays for it. Three, when does the risk of loss or detriment to the good passes from seller the goods to the buyer? Both the lecture and the reader focus on three INCO terms in particular, FCA, FOB, and CIF. FCA, or free carrier, followed by the named place of delivery, is an INCO term adequate for any kind of transport. According to FCA, the seller must arrange the export documents and deliver the goods to the carrier at the place that the buyer named. The risk passes at this point when the goods are delivered to the first carrier, and it's also from this point on that the buyer bears all costs. FOB, or free on board, followed by the name place of shipment, is an INCO term adequate for waterway transport. According to FOB, the seller must arrange the export documents, arrange the carriage to the port of destination, unload the goods and upload them on board the vessel named by the buyer at the port of shipment that the buyer also names. The risk passes at this point, when the goods are on board the vessel, and it's also from this point on that the buyer bears all costs. CIF for cost, insurance and freight, followed by the name place of destination, is like FOB, an eco-term for waterway transport. According to CIF, the seller must arrange the export documents, arrange the carriage to the port of destination, and load the goods and upload them on board the vessel named by the buyer at the port of shipment that the buyer also names. The risk passes at this point, when the goods are on board of the vessel, but the seller pays for the minimum insurance of the goods. Whenever the parties to an international transaction do not set an INCO term, we must shift to a set of binding rules that we already know well, the CISG. Here we will find rules on the duties of both parties to the transaction, rules on the passing of the risk, the remedies available and the exemptions from liability. The seller's duties consist of delivering the goods on time and ensuring that the goods are in conformity. Article 35 of the CISG tells us that in conformity means goods must conform to the contract with respect to quality, quantity, description, and packaging. Article 35, paragraph 2, gives us as well some examples of non-conforming goods. And to know what fit for purpose means, you should check at the New Zealand Muscles case. The buyer's duties 
are to pay the price, pay on time, and take delivery of the goods. Upon receiving the goods, the buyer must inspect them within a short period as it practical in the circumstances. If there is a lack of conformity, the buyer must give notice to the seller within a reasonable time or he will lose the rights to claim remedies later on. The buyer is entitled to remedies when the seller breaches their obligation. The seller has the right to cure any lack of conformity before the delivery deadline, and as long as this does not cause the buyer unreasonable inconvenience or expenses. If the seller does not cure the conformity or fails to deliver even after being given additional time to do so, then the buyer is entitled to 1. Performance 2. Damages 3. Avoidance or termination You will find the requirements for damages in Article 74. They are causation, breach of duty, foreseeability and loss. The avoidance or termination releases both parties from their obligations. Now, one of the requirements for avoidance or termination is not a simple breach, but a fundamental breach. Article 25 will tell you what fundamental breach is about. You will learn that it's a detriment that substantially deprived the counterparty from what contractually he was entitled to expect by applying the reasonable person standard. Now, Article 79 is also important because an unforeseeable impediment beyond control with unavoidable consequences would actually remove this claim from the buyer and the seller will no longer be liable. A very relevant and important topic is the issue of passing of a risk. To say that a party to a contract for the sale of goods bears the risk means that it will be bear the loss if the goods are damaged or destroyed without the fault of either party to the contract. According to Article 67, the risk passes from the seller to the buyer when the goods are handed over to the first carrier for transmission. This means that if there is any accidental loss or damage after this point, the buyer still has to take possession of the goods and pay for them. Exactly. <laughs> Imagine the following case. Suco is a firm producing bottled orange juice based in the Sertão Sergipano, in Brazil. Suco receives an order from the organization of the Beer Lovers Marathon in Liège, who requests that the shipment will be made to the port in Antwerp and from there be carried by truck to Liège. Both parties agreed to include a CIF Inco term into their contract. The seller convinced the buyer to pay upon conclusion of the contract in exchange for a 10% discount. The goods arrived to Liège three days before the marathon. However, upon inspection of the goods, the buyer realizes that the orange juice is not fit for consumption and claims the right of receiving back the paid price and damages, as he had at that time no longer an opportunity of getting orange juice neither from that seller nor from any other seller. Imagine that this was due to a disease of the orange trees. In this case, the risk is in the seller, and indeed the buyer would be entitled to what he claims. Now, alternatively, imagine that the orange juice only perished during the travel. According to CIF, and although the seller sustains the costs until the moment the goods arrive to their destination, the risk passes in the moment the goods are on board of the vessel. In normal circumstances, the buyer will not be able to recover the paid money because the risk is on his side. That would be different, however, if, for example, the orange juice perished during the travel because the seller failed to close the screw caps properly. Due to this omission, the buyer would have right to damages and termination, 
provided the requirements respectively in Articles 74 and 25 of the CISG would be fulfilled. We hope you enjoyed the second audio recap and we look forward to seeing you next week in the International Business Law Lecture.